In this video, I'd like to share some tidbits of information that I've picked up over the years about key fobs and how they interact with alarm systems. Some of the items I'll be covering will be converting the key fob documentation to plain English. I'm pretty sure the people that wrote the documentation have competitions within the office as to who can write the most confusing piece of paper. We'll cover what a fob is and what it can actually do. Back to basics, how to put your battery in your fob. What a fob security mode is and how to set them. You need to know what a loop is to program a fob, so we'll cover what loops actually are and how they correspond to the fob buttons. I'll show you how to change your garage door opener wiring so you can use the security fob to open the garage door. How to put your keypad into programming mode so you can program your fob how to delete defective fobs from your system, and of course how to install new fobs into your system. And finally, if you should happen to lose a fob, we'll look at a quick and easy way to disable it so that someone that finds it can't use it. If you're new to this, you may be asking what the heck is a key fob? A key fob is a small device that allows you to actually control your alarm system without touching the keypad. This makes it possible for you to actually arm and disarm your panel while you're outside of the house. The specific key fob model that I'll be programming today will be a 5834-4. The programming will be accomplished using a 6150RF keypad. I'll explain later why we need this specific keypad, but let me show you how a fob actually works. There are four buttons. Each button is programmed to do something specific. When this button is pushed, it arms your system in stay mode. If you want to disarm your system, you press this button. You don't even have to enter any secret user codes. Now that's totally cool in my book. Here's something else that's neat. Let's push this button. And it's opening your garage door. I personally think it's pretty exciting that a key fob used to control your alarm panel can also replace your garage door opener. Kind of an all-in-one thing. And what makes this possible is that 6150 RF keypad I was telling you about. Here's how that little bit of magic happens. Garage doors are operated by looking for a short coming in on two wires. When you press your garage door opener button, it creates a short on those two wires that the garage door opener is looking for. Each time you press the button, you create a new short. And the garage door opener will alternate between open and close each time it sees a new short. If you want to have more than one button control it, just wire the new button in parallel with the other one. But in this case, we're going to replace that second button with your 6150RF control panel. Now, either button being pushed will create a short, causing your garage door to respond. The new wiring you would add to the control panel is amazingly simple. Just remove the cover plate to the control panel, and you'll see a circuit card. This component right here is called a relay. It'll act as your garage door opening button when you push your remote control. These two contacts here are your input and output to that relay. This is where you'll hook up those two wires from your new circuit. And that's it. You're all done doing the wiring. The rest is programming. When it comes to programming, the installation guide for the key fob won't be helping you much. The main takeaway from this guide will be what loop each button is on and how to change the fob security mode. Oh yeah, and how to put the battery in. For programming instruction, go to the 6150RF installation and setup guide. Before we get started, let's install the battery. Remove the small screw holding the case together. Now you can pry the case apart. Try to do it without stabbing yourself. Okay, that round object is the battery and it's got a sticker on top of it. You want to remove the sticker to activate the battery. You don't have to do this, but I also pried the battery out to make sure there was no sticker on the bottom. And there wasn't. Clip the case back into place, then reinstall your screw. Let's talk about the key fob buttons. While programming for the fobs, neither the Vista panel or the keypad call the buttons buttons. They call them loops. So in order to program the key fob, we have to know which button is associated with which loop. 
with the old 5804 key fobs, this was really simple to figure out. Start at the bottom right hand corner, then work your way counterclockwise. During programming, each of these loops has a pre-programmed template, and this is what they are. Loop 1 controls the relay in your keypad, in other words, opens and closes your garage door. Loop 2, disarm the alarm. Loop 3, arm in the away mode. And finally, loop 4, arm in the stay mode. I think this function is pretty cool. You can arm your house alarm without even getting out of bed. So one day you wake up and your old simple key fob no longer works. You go to buy a replacement, find out they're no longer available. Luckily the 5834 is an acceptable replacement and you pick one up. You open up the instruction manual and you have quite a surprise ahead of you. Apparently the person that wrote this instruction sheet was more concerned about saving paper than they were about teaching someone unfamiliar with fobs on how to program them. Let me see if I can try to clarify this overly complicated picture. Let's see, we have multiple buttons listed as loop 1. They've added two different serial numbers. Then they smeared a whole bunch of mud across this pig by adding random letters to the buttons. Let's start out with the random letters. As it turns out, this fob can be operated in one of two security modes, standard or high. So the letters are used for changing the security mode of your fob. They actually have nothing to do with loops. I will cover this subject in more detail later in this video. Next, what's up with the multiple serial numbers? In the old days, each key fob had one unique serial number. This way the keypad knew exactly who it was talking to. The keypad programming allows four buttons for that serial number. So if we get rid of all the clutter and just look at the entries that have serial number one next to them, this picture should look familiar to you. It's actually the same as our old 5804 fob we looked at earlier. The old start at the bottom right, then work your way counterclockwise trick. So let's go back and look at serial number two. You'll see here to activate each loop, you need to press two separate buttons at the same time. For example, loop one is pressing both the top buttons. Remembering that each serial number can only do four loops, they added a second serial number to give you four more loops. So in reality, you can actually do eight different functions with this key fob. However, comma, in this video, we're going to stick with just one serial number and the original four loops. And those loops will be programmed to the default template that's listed in the 6150 RF panel. Before we start programming this fob, we need to figure out and program what security mode we want it to be operating in. We have two choices, standard security and high security. The fob is shipped from the factory already in high security mode. This means when the fob is communicating with the keypad, it uses rolling security codes for extra security. If you leave it set to high security, there's going to be additional programming required. So for simplicity in this video, I'm going to set it to standard security. To do this, you want to hold down the B, C, and D keys all at the same time for five seconds. Let's take a look. The LED light will flash green, indicating you successfully changed the security mode. To change back to high security mode, press the A, C, and D buttons at the same time for five seconds. This time a successful programming will flash a red LED. Be sure if you're going to continue programming your FOD in according to this video, go back to standard security mode. Let me take a moment now to take a quick sidebar. After you've programmed your FOB and you actually start using it, you have to hold the button for at least one second for it to be activated. This is to prevent false triggerings. And the reason why I'm mentioning that now is because the FOB will tell you what security mode you just transmitted. You'll get a green LED if in your standard security mode and a red LED if you're transmitting in high security mode. All of the programming we'll be doing in this video will be done within the 6150 keypad. Even though the Vista panel can handle key fobs, I found that the programming in this keypad is much easier to use. There may be two different ways to enter programming mode. The first way always works. Within 30 seconds of powering up the display panel, press and hold the 1 and 3 keys at the same time. The second method only works if you have an active tamper switch on your keypad. Simply remove the back case. Today, we're going to use the first method. Before we get started, let me show you a little gotcha. If you're in program mode and you go 30 seconds without pushing any keys, the keypad will drop out of programming mode. 
So try in advance to write down what you're going to do so you can get the programming done in a timely manner without the keypad dropping out. You can remove power remotely back at your Vista 20P alarm panel, or you can remove the power locally at the keypad. Let's take a look. The bottom of the keypad has two small tabs that you need to push up on. This will allow you to remove the faceplate of the keypad. Now that the circuit board is exposed, momentarily disconnect either one of these two wires. It doesn't matter which. This will remove power from the keypad. Alternate flashes of dashes and zeros means you're in programming mode. This is the fob that went bad on me. Open it up and there should be a decal inside showing you the serial number of the fob. We need to remove this serial number from our control panel. Here's how you do this. While in programming mode, press the 5 button. This will place you in the wireless key editing mode. The screen will be flashing a D with a dash. At this point, the control panel is waiting for you to enter the key fob location number, which can be 1 through 8. Let's take a look at a hands-on. Press the 5 button. Press 1 since this fob is the first one I programmed. This screen will display D1, meaning location 1. Then it will show you serial number two digits at a time. To delete the serial number, we'll press asterisk, 9, then asterisk. Then asterisk one more time to exit FOB edit mode. Now that the bad FOB serial number has been deleted, location 1 is now available for you to enter your new FOB. You can skip this step if all you're doing is adding another FOB. Now it's time for the meat and potatoes of this video. Actually programming your new FOB. According to this chart in the 6150RF installation manual, you perform this function by pushing the 8 button when the keypad is in program mode. After pressing the 8 button, your display will show a D and a dash. This means the keypad is waiting for a serial number input. Once your FOB serial number is entered into the keypad, you still have one more step you have to complete before you can use it. You need to enter the security code that's used for arming and disarming your alarm system. This can be accomplished by pushing the 2 key on the keypad. You'll know the keypad is waiting for your security code when it displays U4 on the screen. I don't know about you, but that all still sounds confusing to me. So, here I've written out a step-by-step -step instruction. Feel free to pause the video to review this, or continue on to watch a hands-on demonstration. We have blinking program. 8 to enter program. Hold the key down. Alpha 0, 93, 98, 76. That's a good serial number. Asterisk to accept. Okay. Hit the two button. It wants our secret code. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Done. At this point, you may be wondering, why did you drop out of programming mode before you programmed what each key does? Well, let me show you a cool shortcut. These program addresses are used to change the key functions. But if you take a look at this last column called Defaults, you'll notice each key is pre-programmed to do what we have already shown in this video. So, unless you want to change the button's programming, your fob is fully operational and ready for use. Okay, we're almost done here. Now that I've talked about how wonderful having a key fob is, let me describe the other side of that coin to you. Key fobs can also be extremely dangerous. This small device can not only allow access into your house through the garage door, but at the same time it can also disable your alarm system. And since it is small, it's easy to lose. So, if you're a person that loses things on a regular basis, this is not a recommended device for you to be carrying. However, 
If you do have one and you lose it, let me show you how to fix that problem. This time the document I'm going to show you will be the 6150RF User's Guide, not the Installation Guide. This keypad allows you to enter something called a User Mode. In this mode you can activate or deactivate a key fob without all the hassle of programming that you just saw us go through. First you want to ensure the keypad's been powered up for at least one minute. Press and hold the 1 and 3 keys simultaneously for a few seconds. You'll know you're in user mode when the screen alternately flashes DE and a dash. At this point, it's important you kept good records of your key fob serial numbers. If you want to deactivate a key fob, you need to know which of the eight locations that key fob serial number is residing in. For example, the fob that I programmed in this video was put into position number one. So, I enter the number one on the keypad to control the activation of that key fob. The keypad screen will show you which key fob you entered, followed by a 1 or a 0. 1, it's saying the key fob is enabled. If it's a 0, it's saying it's disabled. So, if you've lost this fob, press the 0 button. The keypad will temporarily disable that fob until you find it. After you find it, go back and change it back to a 1 to re-enable the fob. All the information for that fob is still stored in the keypad. After you press 1 or 0, hit your asterisk to accept the entry. Then asterisk again to exit the user mode. Let's do a hands-on now. Here we can see the fob is currently active. Press and hold the 1 and 3 key at the same time. Slam your elbow into the camera. Select fob number 1. Then 0 to disable it. Asterisk to accept entry. Asterisk again to exit user mode. Testing it, we can see the fob is transmitting, but the keypad is ignoring the fob since the fob is now disabled. Let's re-enable it. Hold 1 and 3 down, get you back into user mode. Select 1 to get key fob number 1. Select 1 to enable. Asterisk to accept. And asterisk to exit user mode. Let's try the fob again. And you can see it now works. Okay, that was a long journey, but I want to thank you for traveling with me, and thanks for watching.